All right, guys, welcome back to The Point Guardian, week five of our podcast here at the UCSDGuardian.org. I am Marcus, and I'm here today with Miguel. Hello. And hopefully Richard will join us later, and um, Alex has a CS project, or so he told me. No, just kidding. He he has a, a big CS project due this week, so he can't make it today. Um, we're going to go over last week's picks. Uh, for some reason, Miguel was really good last week. Okay, I, don't, I see how I don't, that is. I don't know what happened. Um, well, the only pick, I mean, the only pick where you really made a difference, I guess the Rockets blow out against the Knicks, but they won by 15, so that's like... Exactly on the blowout okay, mark. Okay, whatever. But, uh, <laughs> so the Pacers Magic game, uh, the Magic is, like, regressing really badly. Um, and the Pacers are, like, on a five- or six-game winning streak. Yes, Which is just are. fucking crazy because it's like they get all depot and Sabonis, right? And then suddenly they actually know how to play once they don't have to play on the Thunder anymore. <laughs> I mean, they were playing decently on the Thunder. The only thing was Russ was taking up all of the uh all all the usage. He had the ball all the time. Get giving uh all all the depot the ball actually un- unlocked him. Yeah, especially on this team where there's no one else other than Miles Turner, who's been on and off with the concussion. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and they're like a top five or top ten offense too, which the Pacers have never been in the past what ten years, uh, because they used to play Paul George and like two big guys, and they were just really slow. They used to have Roy Hibbert. Yeah, so that they used to be a typical. Eastern Conference team with like no offense and a pretty good defense. Um, the other game that was really interesting last week, I thought, was the Lakers against the Bulls. I really thought my pick would work out until about <laughs> uh, six minutes left in the game, where you, the Chicago Bulls went through a typical like four to five minute stretch, but it just did not score a single point. And it was the first time I saw Chicago play all season. And I was shocked by how badly managed they seemed to be. So in that game, Antonio Blakeney, who is a like a two way player on a two way contract between uh, the D League, the G League, and the Bulls, plays in the first half. He has like 16 minutes, I think. He has 18 points in 16 minutes or something like that. And so I'm like, okay, Why like is this still a two way. Yeah, but even if like just this guy is like having like the game of his life, like who cares? He might like score 30 points, right? No, he ends the game with, like, 18 minutes. Hoiberg plays him two more minutes in the second half, and they lose. They were up by, I think, 16 at some point, and they lose by 10? What's, 9? Something like that. Do you know about Hoiberg's substitution strategy? Because... He plays the starting five 40 minutes. That's how much they played in that so game. So he's Thibodeau. It makes no fucking sense. So he's Thibodeau without the, without the defense. He played Justin Holiday 40 fucking minutes in that game. He went 2 for 10 from the field. Granted, he had like 11 rebounds, but still. like He's the worst shooter in the league, and he gets 40 minutes, and Blakeney gets out. But that's not because he's playing Kobe role for you guys. Throwing but the ball, they when, don't like, need him. Just give the ball to the the guy who was like a hot. Also, uh, Mark Markinen had a really really bad game, like shooting wise. He usually has like a better shooting percentage. He was like way off the whole um, the whole game. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was the first time and probably one of the last times I see the Chicago Bulls play. Um, Oh, what are you talking about? You have the Warrior game. Yeah, I looked. Okay, I watched <laughs> the Warriors. So I watched the first 15 minutes, and I was at home. And then I was like, okay, no. Um, and we were supposed to, I don't know why, but we watched the Minions movie with my parents, and it was much better <laughs> than whatever Chicago Happened did afterwards. against the Warriors. So, hey, it was your fault. They were playing well for the first few mi- for the first uh, two quarters. They were like just about like level. It was really weird. And then they lose by 49 points. <laughs> um and they have, I mean, it's a typical game. Like, the Warriors, like, explode and then just put up uh, 140 on them or something like that. But the thing about the, the Bulls is they can't, they just can't score the ball. Like, if if they score less than 95 points, they're going to lose the ball in the, the ball game. And Yo, they score. Valentine couldn't miss. <laughs> Valentine dropped, like, three but threes But they can't the just have quarter. one player being, like, a little hot at some point in the game. That's how they work now. The only consistent player on that team is 
Jordan Bell? Oh, no, sorry. Robin Wrong Lopez, <laughs> I guess. Okay. Lopez got angry. <laughs> He's always angry. True. Um, so the game I want us to talk about is um, the Warriors Thunder game. Oh, let's not talk about that one. No, but <laughs> okay. let, let's not talk about the game itself. But there was something that really interesting. So the Thunder blew up the Warriors, and then the Warriors just went back to like winning all the games by like 30 points. So I think it was kind of like a one-off game. Oh, also, just to finish on this, um, the Bulls lost by 49 points to the Warriors without Kevin Durant or Draymond Green. That's how bad they are. Like, even the Mavericks would, like, make it a game if those two players were out. That's, well, that's... we'll find out tonight against the Kings because the Warriors might not have Durant, Curry, and Draymond. They're all questionable. If they don't have Curry, then I don't think they blow out the Kings. They might still it's win. It's going to be an interesting game. They might still win, but they're not going to blow them out without Curry. Um hey. It's Clay versus the Kings. and last Yeah, but Curry had like 26 points in a quarter against the Bulls, and the game was done. Well, yeah. I guess Clay can have that. Anyways. Clay, well, Clay's 37-point quarter came against uh, the Kings. The Kings, yeah, so. that's true. Okay. Um, so, Warriors and Thunder, um, not a great game. It was like... Oh, it was a great game. <laughs> was it? The calls weren't terrible, like uh, a certain Celtic game. Um, both teams played well, at least. The Thunder played well for three quarters. The Warriors played well after the second quarter. And then Kerr decided to pull out all of the starters at, once they were starting to make a run at seven minutes left in the game. So I guess, like, yeah. okay, concede it. But I was thinking, we can make a run here. We can make a run here. But Kerr just decided to pull it, so it's like okay. Yeah, it's. I don't think it matters in the end. What I do want to talk about is uh, during the broadcast, Mark Jackson, who is apparently the most anti-warrior commentator ever. Like whenever he talked, he like talked up every Thunder player, and he was like super like critical of the Warriors. Granted, it was like a really really bad game for the Warriors, but every time he spoke, I was like, okay. But he said at some point that Billy Donovan was a good coach. And I do want to talk about that because I don't think Billy Donovan is a good coach. Um, We're in agreement there. Proof I don't think he's they lost anything, to the honestly. Mavericks on Sunday. Very um, true. He has had Russ carrying his team in every other player on that team sucked until they moved to other teams. I could just go on and on. They're like, they're like what? Yeah. Six and three. Eight. If there are any points I'd make, is he hasn't made his role players better. They still don't play well in clutch time, which is what I was banking on uh, for the Warrior game. Mm-hmm. And, Dude, eight and you, all, you brought up the Dallas game. Yeah. Rick Carlisle is a good coach. Yeah, he is. And he just doesn't have any talent on his team right now. But that's, Yo, that's Barnes, fine. Barnes is a good player. You know what I mean, though. Like, <laughs> I got you, I got you. He's a good player, but he's like a fourth option. He's not a main option. Uh, I think his best role is a second or third option. Second? Really? He can score, but, like, you saw him being the third option on the Warrior team when uh, yeah, but that was we won our first championship. I think he's better now, that's for sure. He's better now. I guess. So, he thrived as a third option then. Yeah. So, if if he's better now, why why would he regress to fourth? Because now everybody has a super team. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Um, so going back to Billy Donovan, and I, I kind of looked it up. I was like, okay, so he's most known for winning back-to-back NCAA championships with um, Florida, right? With Florida, two thousand six, two thousand seven. That Florida team had all Horford and Joakim Noah on it, who were like possibly the best like duo to play in the front court in like decades. College ball. Yeah, just they were just really good, and they were um, the only their only opponent. I looked it up was Ohio State at that point, and Ohio State had Greg Oden and Mike Conley on one team. Yo, Conley's good, and that <laughs> okay, was I that was pretty you. dope. So they were Oden one in college was a beast. They were one and two, yeah, they were one and two. But like Florida was just loaded, and then he goes back, he loses all Horford and Joakim Noah to the draft, and he misses the NCAA tournament for two seasons. Okay, so that's one. Then he gets. You know, he stays on the co- as coach, and then he moves on to the Thunder. What they do last year was just give the ball to Russ, and Russ is like, if you I'm put angry, him, give me the ball. If you put him in a vacuum, he's probably like, right now, like, just the best player. 
not not like he's not the best basketball player. He's not it's just like give him the ball, let him be angry, let him score, and like let him just wreak havoc. He's no probably refs. the best right now. <laughs> exactly, that's kind of the thing. <laughs> so that's what he did last year, right? He averages a triple double. He like just pads his stats all the time. Eh, nobody really cared last year because nobody thought they could be good. But this he year, he played the entire fourth quarter against the Warriors bench. So yeah, but this year they feel like. Everybody felt like the Oklahoma City Thunder was going to be good, me included. After uh, after a period of adaptation, that's that's fair. But now they're like calling people out. Russ called like someone out on Instagram saying like, "Oh, we need to like turn our like words into actions" or some some like cryptic message like that. He's calling a LeBron. I don't know, but like Billy Donovan is. I don't know. I when I heard that, I was just shocked. I was like, "There's no way Billy Donovan is a good coach." He's had the privilege of having good teams, good players. I don't see a system. I saw them play even when they were playing against the Warriors. There's like some system in place, but most of the time it's just Russ, Russ, Russ and like Paul George. Paul, Paul George, George beat us, and they just soundly. like it was just individual talent beating the Warriors because for some reason the Warriors were just off on that game. We were passing the ball to them. There yeah. was a time where I thought Durant forgot who who Russ was and threw the ball right in front of him. Like, it wasn't even to his side. Russ was standing in front of Curry, and he threw the ball right to him. And I was like, what the hell is going yeah. on? And so we had like 30 passes like that. And yeah. regardless of who you're playing against, you can play against who's the worst team in the league right now? The Chicago Bulls. <laughs> And you can lose to that, but we weren't locked in. They definitely were, and yeah, it, it was just kind of like one of those games. And the the thing about the Thunder is they have a really good defense. Um, they also have really good individual players that play defense. So I don't I don't really think it can be attributed to like a team philosophy or whatever. And um, I also heard that I don't. It was someone on the broadcast team. Maybe it was Paul Pierce. I don't. I don't remember exactly. But he said like, "Oh, indiv- individual players like win playoff series," like kind of saying that you know like the system doesn't matter in the playoffs anymore, and you can like one player can just take over, which is fair. But when you don't have any system to begin with, I don't think that's like doable. Uh, I don't think the Cavs have a system to begin with. They just give it to LeBron. So in a sense, that's true. But if you look at the Warriors teams nowadays, it's built on the system. It's not even... Although, nowadays, I'm getting angry at Kerr for not emphasizing ball movement and player movement more. Like, sometimes I see the offense regress to uh, give the ball to Duran and Iso, which I don't like. But very much of the time, our, our, our whole offense is based on player movement and Curry's gravity. Yeah, but even like any any other team, like the Celtics have a system. The the Rockets, they obviously they depend a lot on on uh, on Harden, but they still have a system. Um, Paul's and, been playing well, well, well for them since. Yeah, that's back, true. Though. That's true. And but you just don't see that in OKC. And I, I agree, Cleveland doesn't really have a like a a set system. And Tyron Lue is probably a really bad coach too. But I trust LeBron in somewhere where there's no system rather than like whatever is going on in OKC. Just because LeBron has like that intelligence of the game where you're just like, okay, this guy's just, it's just, okay. Russell Westbrook is going to take the ball and just going to like drive into the lane. And like that's all he does. And most of the time it works, but there's no nuance, you know? So it's like. Their nuance, if anything, it would be like a continuous pounding. It would be. <laughs> yeah. It would be Russ charging in, if that doesn't work, pass the ball out. When Durant was there, it would be, it would be kick the ball out to Durant. And then Durant would take his job. But they played ISO all the job. freaking time yeah. when Durant and, was and, there. And, and, and then Durant would take his job. So now with Carmelo and uh, Paul George, I th- if they're going back to this, it would be Russ taking charge and then kicking it out to one of these two premier scorers and then letting them work again. That was what I think everyone believed would happen, and it's not working out as well as people are expecting it to. If there's anything I'd point out, it's that 
their fourth quarter defense is tr- is terrible. It jumps from s- or oh, really? at least for November. They're second th- over November over the whole game. They have the second highest defensive rating in the league. Like second best, you mean? So second best. Okay. Yes. And in the fourth quarter, it goes way down. In the fourth quarter, they're down to 20th. Okay. So something goes wrong in the fourth quarter, which is not a good thing. Yeah, people figure them Especially out the because playoffs. they don't have a system. No, it's not only that, but I, I think Paul George also said it like, oh, we need to figure out what's going on in the fourth quarter. But like when you have three players like that, they're going to figure something out at some point. But I still don't think that's like enough to do anything in the playoffs. Um, a lot of I people think they can say, go far against a lot of teams, but against a if you put them up against the Spurs or against the Warriors, I don't think they can take it. If if but the playoffs again, that, if the players start today and you, the OKC Thunder is playing the Timberwolves, who do you pick to win the series? Neither of defense right now, though. Yeah, but who do you pick right now? I'd go with Minnesota I'd pick the Thunder. Really. I think Paul George is better than uh, Jimmy Butler, period. Oh, I strongly disagree, but... (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. Jimmy Butler is much better. Paul George was the second best player in the East when he was healthy. Yeah, that was like five years ago. He hasn't lost any any of that. Jimmy Butler is like hitting his prime, though. And Paul George isn't? He's old. I think they're like (laughs) the same same They're like the same age, but... I think Jimmy Butler can do more for you than Paul George can. And I think Paul George has more of an ego than Jimmy Butler has. I Okay, maybe he's not a better player. He might player. have more of he's an a ego. Better, I'll, he's I'll a better give you that. team player. I think Jimmy Butler is a better team player than Paul George ever yes. is or ever was. Yes. As soon as Paul George understood that he could be the, the primary option on the team, he was like, I'm the primary option on the team. Jimmy Butler was never like that. He was like, by default, because the balls were like just sucked for two years. But he can defer. He can do much more for you. He's a more complete player. I would argue that. Okay. But in terms of blowing up, and that is, like, I believe that both players can, can lock you down. Yeah, Paul, but George, Paul George can get hot. Paul George can get hot. Yeah. He has... He's a better shooter, probably. In those old uh, Indiana Pace, Pacers, Pacers series, yeah, he would hit clutch shot after clutch shot. And it made Jimmy people Butler think. Too. It made people think. Can he keep up with LeBron? No one thought Jimmy yeah, because, Butler was on the level of LeBron because their team sucks. Jimmy Butler still defending LeBron. It's just that everybody else on that team was bad. I mean, Le- LeBron overall proved that he couldn't, uh, or that he that LeBron was much better. Yeah, yeah. But we were going into a series back when. Uh, Back before Roy Hibbert laid his uh, goose egg, and when Lance Stevenson actually did stuff, that good, team good people thought, "Wait a second, they could unthrone LeBron." It, it it never happened, but there was that thought there, and that's because how good Paul George was. Uh huh. Even with how good J- Jimmy Butler has been, he's never reached the level of people thinking that he was close to un- un- unseating LeBron. Okay, we we have. I think we can kind of finish yeah, let's, finish that uh, conversation. Just breaking right now. Wow, breaking news on the podcast. Um, David Fitzdale has been fired by Memphis. Really? They've been he, playing well. No, they've lost eight in a they've row. They've lost eight in a row. But Mike Conley's they injured, well, but they they were going through injuries. Mike Conley's injured, but Paul uh, Marcus All called him out yesterday. Really? Uh, because he sat during the fourth quarter of a game that they lost, and he was like, "If I'm not one of the like." primary guys on the team why are you sitting me the day after Fitzdell gets fired I think that's great I think that's like that's like the definition of the whole league is like a superstar driven league and the coaches are just like complimentary except for you know like Popovich, Popovich basically and a few others Brad maybe Stevens, and yeah I'd say Kurt. but yeah I want to say Kurt. You, you know what you know what I mean though yeah and then Bringing it back to the Bulls, the Bulls chose their coach over Jimmy Butler. Um, but Memphis did not make that mistake. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, there's probably been like some friction between Fitzdale and, uh, and uh, Gasol, I'm assuming. 
Um, I mean, that's the only reason why I could understand yeah. a firing were there. Yeah. I mean, Memphis is not the Kings. They're not going to fire a coach over a losing streak when there's an injury to a ma- to a major part piece. But also, Marcus is probably the best thing that's ever happened to them. And if they have to choose between Marcus and whoever the coach is, the yeah front office is probably going to pick Marcus. Which is why they're not the Kings. Yeah, that's fair. Although I, I'd rather have Marcus Altman boogie as like a as like a temperamental type of not as a player but just like as an organization, like this is our guy. Getting behind boogie is hard. A few years back, I would have I I would have taken Marcus Altman over boogie. Period. Yeah, yeah, but that's not that's not. But what right I mean. now, boogie is just a better boogie. Player. Boogie is just a better player now. But I mean, like he's also still like as difficult as he used to be. I I think he just needs the right coach. I don't think he's found that yet. Or well, he found well, he that, had and, it, then, and then and they then fired him. <laughs> yeah, he got fired. Um, okay, uh, we can make this podcast a little bit shorter. Is there is there anything else you want to bring up? Because otherwise, we can just move on to like the power rankings um, from this week. Uh, are we using ESPNs? Yes, we're always using ESPNs. The great power rankings from ESPN. Um, the Rockets and the Warriors switched. Um, the the Rockets are uh, number two and the Warriors are number three. I'm assuming it's because the Warriors lost against the Thunder last week, but well, yeah, I I I can see that the Rockets have been playing out of their mind lately, especially with Chris Paul coming back. Yeah. Um, what do you have after Spurs at four, Cavaliers creeping up to um five? They're twelve and seven now. Nobody's talking about them anymore because they're winning. Uh. It seems like they're just going to be the number two team in the East. Uh, they're going to get better if Isaiah Thomas comes back healthy. And the Celtics are clearly the best team in the East right now, and Cleveland is just like right behind them. Definitely. If uh, there's anything, I'd say, like Draymond said, LeBron's playing a lot of minutes. You got to start looking at that, and yeah. when is he going to start coasting? Is he going to take another two week vacation in the middle of the season? Because right now it just doesn't seem sustainable. Well, it seems like it and seems if like he does take this two week vacation, how many games are the Cavs going to lose in this period? That's the thing. It seems like this is another Cavs team that doesn't really care about having home field advantage. Um, Detroit is still hanging around. Then you have. Toronto, Portland, Philadelphia, Minnesota at 10. Philly. Denver at 11. The Pelicans rising. Behind a 3-1 and one week. Um, it seems like they're not going to blow it up. If they keep being in, in a playoff contention. But I'm I, surprised they ranked the Wizards over the Thunder right now. Oh, man. The Wizards suck. I mean, they, they lost John Wall. Yeah. That's that's, and that's, that's their, why they th- suck. It's, it's their motor. <laughs> that's why they suck. Uh, but the Thunder is 8 and 11. I don't know. The Bucks behind them, they slowed down. They have, they've been losing close games. That's, a th- that's what I've been looking at right now yeah. with the Bucks. Um, Giannis is still playing out of his mind, but can they get anyone else behind them? What's, the, well, what's their defensive ranking? The Bucks defense is twenty fifth. Oh, this is in fourth quarter, but still. Yeah, they have to. They have to get better. Um. Yeah, the Bucks defense is just twenty fifth. Period. That's not good. And with their length, they shouldn't be this bad at defense. Twenty seconds. Sorry. Yeah. But they have to get better, especially in the East, because the East is not going to be in like an offense uh, type of. Um, conference is going to be yeah. defense. It's going to be banging it out. Yeah, making all these plays, especially with how center based it is right now. We have Miami with Walt Whiteside. We have the Sixers with both front court players and then yeah, uh, role players in other positions. We have well, LeBron is LeBron. That's a different story. Le- 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 well, and 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 the Celtics have Horford. But it's very much a center-based league right now. Yeah. Especially with Drummond playing as well as he is in Detroit. That's, at le- at least that's the weird. East. That's weird to say. Yeah. Um, 
I just want to point out the Chicago Bulls are three and fifteen, and are officially officially have now the worst record in the NBA. I am sorry, <laughs> tanking big time. I started watching some college basketball. I was like, okay, which of those we're, we're gonna top get, three players? We're gonna, are gonna get, get one of those players. So uh, my, Michael Porter Jr., who's who was a consensus top five pick for next year, um, the surgery right? injured his back. Yeah, he has played two minutes this season, and is probably not gonna come back. Uh, so he's going to be a big, big question mark uh, going into. Uh, it's now a who it's are It's kind of like pick? Kyrie. Kyrie like missed the whole season basically with Duke when he was playing college, and he still won number one. So Same with Simmons. Also that draft, well, that draft didn't class didn't was did, horrible. Simmons didn't play the whole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Kyrie draft class. This, this draft Kyrie class is probably it. a little bit better than that. Um, so you have Mar- Marvin Bagley Jr., who was um, Marvin Bagley. Bagley the third, sorry, who's uh, playing for Duke. He's had like several thirty plus, ten plus rebound games, which is just crazy because he's like a freshman. Um, you have DeAndre Ayton who plays for Arizona. Arizona sucks right now, so I haven't had the chance to see them. But uh, I think he's been doing like fine, just not really great. Those are like, and then there's the guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember his name, but he plays in Europe, and he's he might be the number one pick. Luca, yeah, Doncic. There you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's I mean, the guy's a just pick another white dude. Why not? He, he's okay. In his defense, he's playing super well for uh, Real Madrid. Yeah, and that's the best league. He's a other really good than player. He's outside he's, of the NBA. The Euro League is the best. Yeah, and he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing. High minutes and dominating on yeah, and he's a good team, and he's there. been playing professional ball for like two years. I, I think he's a he's definitely a top three player. I don't know if people should still go with European dudes at one. It's very much. It's very hard to judge your yeah because the dudes, competition is just not his, the same. But the thing is, you can't really bust with with a European of uh with how well he he's been playing. I'm I'm comparing him a lot to Rubio, not in his game, but in his status, in that he will do what he's going to. He he will play well at the he, like he's yeah, a low bust potential, and very high uh, superstar potential. So depending on how you want to go there. I mean, I don't know what Chicago's going to do. I don't even know if they're going to end up with the with the one pick right now. If they get the one pick, I, I'd pick Marvin Bagley, uh the third, but. Well, also, what's his he, position? He plays par forward. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, I just realized that. That's bad. Can they just play? They can just play him and Markinen. Just get rid of the center. Yeah. Okay. He plays center for Duke, but he's a par forward. Um, How tall is he? 6'11", I'm saying. Okay. Let me check it out. You can, you, you, you can pull that into, into today's league. I'm just looking at this like... He's six eleven. You also have Port Portis on the team, and S- technically Murat. Someone please get rid of Portis. Someone like trade for him. I don't know. Trade for Ugh. him. Are you are you gonna bundle him and Justin Holiday? I. Yeah. Anyways, uh, another player to watch out for this season is Kevin Knox. He was a shooting guard for Kentucky. He's probably the best shooting guard in his class, and he's really really good. Oh, he's a small forward, I guess, but he plays shooting guard because uh, he's six nine. He's gonna be good. So there's like a top five, and then it just falls off after that. So we'll be keeping taps on the top five players um, until draft day, I guess. So it's Doncic, Aiton, Michael Porter Jr., probably Kevin Knox, and um, Marvin Bagley the third. Oh, also, I don't know if you saw that, but Alabama played a game against Minnesota, and they ended the game oh, like playing three, three against players. five, and um, and they outscored them, yeah, thirty to twenty two. And their um, point guard, who's like a really really good point guard, um, just balled out, had like forty points. Yeah, what's I mean, what's his name? Who, um, they were down three players, and you somehow out or they they are down two players on the court, and they somehow outscore the other team, who's ranked higher than you. It was a rank twenty five to fourteen game. Yeah. And this guy definitely jumped his status. Just that game alone is insane. That's true. His name is How did I forget? 
I watched I watched highlights like three times. Uh, I still can't find it. Colin Sexton. There you go. Okay. Colin Sexton. So he's a point guard. He's I think he's a, he was a top ranked uh, point guard coming into the season, like the, from the freshman class. At and least. he proved it. And uh, yeah, he's probably really good, and he's probably one and done, because who goes to Alabama to play more than one season of college basketball at least? Uh, so we'll be keeping tabs on tabs on I guess the top five. The top five is pretty much shaping up right now to be Chicago, Atlanta, Sacramento, Dallas, and Phoenix. Um, possibly the Brooklyn Nets, but also that pick might change hands. It's with the Cavaliers now that you might get traded during the for DeAndre Jordan. Uh, ooh, that'd be interesting. Clippers in full rebuild mode. They get two picks in the top ten. I I would I would do it. I mean I wouldn't do it, and I do think that uh Cleveland needs a a restart, but I don't think it's gonna help them with the against the Warriors. Honestly, we I think it helps the Clippers. Oh, it definitely helps the Clippers. Yeah. For uh, Tr- Trisha Tristan Thompson and then the pick for DeAndre Jordan, that's a good. Yeah, they get a guy who does the same thing, honestly. Just overpaid, but yeah. Oh, the, definitely o- o- overpaid, which is why the the contracts might match up so well. But they also get a probably top five, top seven pick. The the Brooklyn Nets have been playing all- surprisingly well. Mm-hmm. So, s- but they're. Not they're not going to win playoffs in the right East. now. They're six, the six worst record. I mean, six six worst, e- seventh, seventh worst. Okay, I, I still think that they can pull. That it's going to be a low lottery pick, or high lot. I think it's be- going to be between five and ten. I don't think it's going to creep into the top five, and a lot of people agree that the top five is loaded, and then it definitely Drops falls off. off. Yeah. But so we'll keep a tab on it. Uh, we have a little bit of time to go over our picks for next week. Yeah. Everyone's calling the Spurs. Um, uh, Spurs versus Mavericks. Everyone's gonna call that. Yeah, the Wizards are not <laughs> winning against the Sixers. Not without John Wall. Not without John Wall. But I don't think Alex knows that John Wall's out. <laughs> that might that might be it. <laughs> uh, uh, disregard the Lakers picks because they're picking that is Lakers awful. over Warriors. Yeah, the Warriors are winning against the Lakers. Sixers and Celtics hey, is probably going to be a really good game. They might have a chance if all three of them are out again. Curry and uh, no, no. Curry and Durant are out today. I don't buy it. I don't buy the Lakers <laughs> winning against the Warriors. No, just stop. Trying to throw some argument in there. No, it's not going to happen. No. So the Sixers Celtics is probably going to be a really good game, and it might be a preview of like a first round, like or even a second round uh, playoff series, and that'd be dope. Um, and beat against yep. Horford. You picked the Bucks over the Blazers. Let's hear this. Uh, where is it? Oh yeah. Uh, sure. I did not see that the Bucks went one and two over the past week. Uh, but I have a few teams like that where I just believe in them. So the Bucks, the T Wolves, um, the Some Nuggets. Keep picking the Thunder, but and I just keep. I did not pick the Thunder. I picked the Timberwolves. Well, yeah. But not yeah, I I, be, I believe in the Bucks. I believe that they're like the fifth best team in the East. I don't like the Blazers. I still think they're gonna regress. They're doing really well right now. I have to admit that, but I still think I don't have a logical explanation. Oh, it's at the, it's at the Blazers too. It's at Blazers, and I think Nurkic will play pretty well in a bruising That's style possible. of game. Yeah. Uh, uh, in that what nine a.m. game That's this awful. week? That's awful. Or th- this past week, he played insane i think he would play he's an early riser <laughs> he plays well in the he mornings. plays well in the morning yeah they just that's gotta change awful. the schedule for the entire year and then that that's how they're gonna win but man he played out of his mind that game do the blazers have anyone who can stop Giannis? no i mean again it depends on how well do the blazers the have anyone who could stop it <laughs> Or do do the Bucks have anyone to stop Lillard and McCall? At least one McCall. of them. I don't know how good of a defender uh, Chris Middleton is. Uh, Chris Middleton is a good defender. Bledsoe is too. And, and Bledsoe is a, a bulldog, but it's just in, having... in his house, I don't think Damian Lillard's going to lose, especially if it becomes a cl- a crunch time play. Mm-hmm. That's when Dame time comes on, and he just That's drops fair. shots. I'm still big in the books, but also. It'll be a fun uh, game. 
Also, yeah, Jason Kidd might be on the hot seat. Thunder Wolves. <laughs> Thunder Wolves, we've already ar- argued this. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> I did not think about that. Yeah, I, I'm picking the T-Vols, but um, mostly because the Thunder just lost against the Mavericks. Spurs Thunder. It's a surprising consensus that everyone's saying the Spurs. Uh, I don't trust 15. the Thunder. Well, no, no one trusts the yeah, the that's 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 easy. <laughs> but the Thunder are the team that can blow out. So if there was a game to bet on, might as well bet on this one because the Spurs aren't playing insane. Are, are, are we betting? Are we betting on Popovich like finding a reason to like sit someone <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon? Um, oh, it's yeah, at we Spurs. It's at Spurs. Or, we have, no, we no, haven't no. talked it, it's about. It's at Thunder. I think we haven't talked about Kawhi. He's been missing and like. The first, the few news that we get from the uh, the Spurs are like, yeah, we don't know. It's like it, it, it's Popovich news. Yeah, and in it's that, like either they know and they're like super confident he's gonna come back in the middle, or they like legit do not know and they're like really worried about him. So there's rumors about him coming back this week, I think. Yeah, but they've had these rumors for the past like seven weeks. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Oh, Parker said that. Uh, He'll be back in a couple weeks. About Kawhi, because yeah. Parker's back now. Parker's back now, but oh. it's just I guess no one know, knows when he's he been. Back. We're getting no information whatsoever on the Spurs. And uh, the, mo- the less information f- we get, I mean, it is the Spurs. For all we know, he, he's in practice to uh, today. He appears <laughs> at he appears at shoot around tomorrow, and then. It's still gonna be fine. But I still don't think they they went against the Thunder. I don't see. I, 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 then there's gonna self implode. Let's let's just Yeah. Fire Billy Donovan. That's all I have to say. <laughs> They'll be better without him. With another coach. I don't know. Just bring Mark Mark Jackson back or something. Stop him from commenting on all the games. Last game is Rockets, Lakers, Rocket Rockets is just gonna win. Um both Alex and Richard picked the Lakers because they're Lakers fan, but let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> The Lakers have a tough week playing the Warriors and the Rockets. That's they, tough. they started off against the Clippers, so it start is a bit better. That's, I guess. <laughs> oh man, the, if Pat Beverly was there, Pat now everybody's Beverly gonna be like, "Oh man, Lonzo is having a great game," and then you're like, "Oh yeah, the top five players on the on the Clippers are like Ooh, injured." We, we get we get to talk about uh Pat Beverly again. How he's not locking down Lonzo. How he's not locking. <laughs> how he's not even playing anymore. Um, okay, that that's that's all we have, right? That's all we have for today. Uh, kind of a slow week. Nothing really happened. Uh, I think we might be kind of hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, <laughs> hopefully, we can talk a little bit about. I think coaching hot seats. I think that would be an interesting take for for next next uh, next week. Billy Donovan definitely. Um, Jason Kidd maybe. Who knows. All these teams are underperforming, anyways. Uh, that's all. That's all we have. Uh, shout out to Hojun for producing the podcast and the multimedia department at the UCSD Guardian dot org. Uh, and we'll see you next, next week. week.